Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy coming to you from Soto Park, the temporary new digs of Teatro Zinzani. That's right, the brilliant and beloved cabaret circus extravaganza is back in the heart of Seattle with a three month run of their brand new show appropriately titled Coming Home. Coming Home features a stellar cast that includes Zinzani veterans Kevin Kent, Manuela Horn, Michael Evolution, and the incomparable Rizzo. The show is packed with humor, awe-inspiring moments, delightful surprises, and, of course, a delicious dinner provided by Urban Feast. Coming Home runs through February 19th, 2023. More information, including how to get tickets, is at Zinzani.com. We've got a terrific lineup for you, including an immersive exhibition at King Street Station, the fine art of gluten-free baking. A big part of my MO is to try and make food for people so that everybody feels welcome. And music from Whiting Tennis. I have the questions to your answers. Like a drawbridge across the mall. And we'll begin with the immensely talented illustrator and muralist, Stevie Shaw. I'm Stevie Shaw. I'm a Seattle-based and Seattle born and raised illustrator and muralist. And I do a little bit of everything, illustration, design stuff. I love working on merch for like local businesses and all my friends and things. I'll do like canvas paintings, paintings on wood. During the pandemic, a lot of businesses um, were concerned about break-ins, things like that. So a lot of them were boarded up on the outside, just covered in plywood. And over the course of about a week, Ballard had a bunch of artists come through and paint those boards. And for a lot of people, that was like their first few murals. For me, it was my first few murals, like painting at a large scale. All of these small businesses were getting boarded up and this beacon of hope in her color and her vibrancy, her patterns. And we kind of started to see it all over town. We fell in love with everything about her, her drive, her work ethic, her fierce loyalty to her own vision and the way that she translates that in different spaces and per project kind of just blew us away. And we were like, if she'll have us, this would be the dreamiest collaboration ever. <laughs> After meeting and talking about it and really getting to check out the space, we decided that we wanted to cover like almost every single service with artwork. All of the pieces from that show I made for the show. She's kind of filled every little nook and cranny in these really fun and surprising ways. I mean, you're going down the stairs and it's like, oh my God, there's another piece and it's perfect and it needs to be there. I think the work that I enjoy making has a lot to do with my heritage and retelling those kind of stories and integrating them with my world, right? Like my universe and my experience. So I like them to have this mystical feel and have a couple passes, you know, like you have the first pass, it's really bold, colorful, hopefully. And, you know, you sort of keep noticing these things about it. I don't know that I would ever put Stevie, especially at this point in her career and in her life, into a category, because I think she's going to blow all of those categories out of the water. And I mean, I keep telling every person that's buying, you should invest in this now before she has her solo show at the Whitney. <laughs> I think Instagram, especially because I started doing murals during the pandemic, was a really big part of my journey, just sharing everything. A lot of people that I met after lockdown, I have been in communication with for a really long time over Instagram. I had been emailed by Murphy Gilson, who works for UW, about putting a mural on this one wall in U District. So over time and conversation after doing a site visit, I really wanted to just like blast the whole thing over. 
This mural is based on a Norwegian folk tale about these two brothers. It is sort of like a Norse origin story. I have a few color combinations that I normally gravitate towards. The contrast is really important between these colors, so it normally ends up being sort of like red and blue or black and orange. I'm hoping that there's a vibrancy, like a life that is breathed into the storytelling behind the imagery and sort of the care that is put into painting something so large. Seeing my work out in the wild is really special to me, I think because I get to think about all the relationships that I built that led up to that project happening and seeing people interact with it or, you know, enjoy it or just walk by it is, is pretty special. I think I would always find time to make art. It's always been a huge part of my life and a huge part of who I am. Follow Stevie and her myriad of creative projects on Instagram and at stevieshow.com. Next up, we visit Well-Fed Bakery in Wallingford to discover the science and art of gluten-free baking. My mom was great at allowing us to experiment in the kitchen, and she was a baker. She used to bake bread. I can say that I was a professional baker at age 13. My best friend and I were trying to earn money to go to Marriott's Great America, to the amusement park. And my mom said, if you wanna go, you have to sell something that you made yourself. And we decided that we would make baguettes. And so every couple of weeks we would get together and it was an all day process making these baguettes. They were delicious and we sold them for 75 cents a piece. About 18 years ago, I started having some weird digestive symptoms and learned that I couldn't tolerate gluten any longer. And I've always loved to bake and I've always really loved eating baked goods. They're just my happy place. And I tried a bunch of recipes and products that were on the shelf that frankly at that point were terrible. And I realized that if I wanted to continue eating those things that I needed to make them myself. I have a variety of flours that I use in order to mimic what happens when you bake with wheat flour. And I have used primarily brown rice, sorghum, oat flour, coconut flour, arrowroot starch. And then I have a variety of different flavors that I do. So the pumpernickel would have chocolate and molasses and caraway in it. I do an orange bread that grinds up half of an orange for each loaf. And then I also do crackers that have lots of different kinds of seeds in them, flax seeds and pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, and olive oil. I found out about Charlotte baking gluten-free bread from a neighbor of mine, and my son and I have been eating gluten-free forever, and Charlotte's loaves are incredibly crusty and heavy and satisfying. This is fig pecan, and my other favorite is her pumpernickel. Bread's really like the, I don't know, the unicorn, I guess. You can get great cookies. There are places that do cakes that are that are pretty good. And bread is this, you know, you really need gluten. That's what makes the bread stretchy and it allows you to get the big pockets of air in there, which helps it to rise. And so recreating that without gluten requires additional things to kind of shore up the dough. And it definitely took a while. Hey. hey. I usually order two, and this time I only did one because I'm probably going to eat it by the time I get home. It's Your favorite, too, I know. I know. <laughs> it's the chew, it's the flavor, it's the crumb. In terms of the finer tuning, the texture, and the flavor, that's all, you know, what feels good to me, what smells good, what looks good out of the oven. What I'm trying to create is, is a food experience for someone, and that feels like art to me. There you go. Thank you. Multi-grain. 
I love toast in the morning, put a little edamame hummus on it, slice a tomato, and it's perfection. A big part of my MO in how I live my life is to try and make food for people so that everybody feels welcome to eat. So when I have people over, there are a variety of different things for meeting people's different eating needs. You know, it's how we come together. And I feel so strongly that people really feel welcome. For more information, including how to sign up for Charlotte's regular email updates, go to wellfedbakery.com. Our band this week is Whiting Tennis, featuring Whiting Tennis on guitar and vocals, Kevin Warner on bass, and Jim Wood on drums, performing Poor Boy Just Don't from Whiting's 2021 release, I Do. I Do is available on Bandcamp and from CD Baby. Catch Whiting live on Wednesday, December 21st at the Rabbit Box Theater in Pike Place Market. And check out Whiting's visual artwork at Cusera Gallery in Seattle, Rousseau Lee Gallery in Portland, and Derek Eller Gallery in New York City. Before wrapping up, we have a few highlights from opening night of Imminent Mode Us, an immersive exhibition of installations and fashion at King Street Station. I present to you Imminent Mode Us.
Imminent Mode Us is up now through January 5th, 2023 in the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture, located on the third floor of King Street Station. More information is at seattle.gov arts. And that does it for us. Big thanks to Teatro Zanzani for letting us hang out in their very cool space. Ticket information for coming home is at zanzani.com. And thanks to you for tuning in. Have a great week, a wonderful holiday, and we'll see you next year.